What's up? What's up? See, I know you were uh, disappointed after the last one. I guess uh, did that stay with you, or how long did it take to kind of move past that? The injury part of it was, you know, I mean, no more than like a week. Um, yeah, it was tough. The injury or the frustration? The frustration. Yeah. How did you move past it? I started going to therapy. <laughs> Honestly, um, I'm a big advocate for mental health, especially in men. <clears throat> and, you know, I had a lot of things that I was carrying with me for my whole life. I guess that's how, you know, we get in a bunch of people in a cage for a profession. But, um, no, it was, <clears throat> that was kind of the turning point. I just I felt like I was juggling a lot, a lot of things going on that I'd never fully dealt with. And I said, you know what, let's, uh, let's figure some things out, Steve. Let's, um, let's, let's take the fight inside. So in retrospect, is it almost like, hey, it was a good thing, or or have you well, it was, matured it was, that far yet? That's the thing. I mean, I think if I can build on a good thing, bad thing, it's it is what you decide it is, and I've decided that it was just a thing that happened, and you know, like it could have been much worse. There are worse things that could happen, you know, not just not just in general, but to me. So it was like one of those things where after enough time had passed, I'd realized. I could sit around and be depressed about it, or I could, you know, just accept it for what it is. It was, I had a lot of good things happen in my life, and, you know, things like that happen sometimes. Was there a push to rebook that fight, or were you? Yeah, you know, initially that was what we were talking about, but um, when Fedor came back, everything got pushed around. So, so talk to me about this matchup, right? Because it's an intriguing one. Like, you get a newcomer, which is bizarre given your experience and where you are in the rankings, but it's a very accomplished newcomer, you know what I mean? Somebody yeah. that's really done some things in the sport so what did you think when it was the name given to you i i trained with him three years ago like right before he went and he won the pfl tournament and um whenever he you know he won and he won we were really happy for him really proud of him and then he he kind of disappeared there and i guess i guess it was you know the the geopolitical climate there is what held him back so <clears throat> whenever i saw that bellator had signed him i had a feeling at some point we might we might have to see each other and um like I said, I was more than happy for him when everyone out and he did his thing, but you know, now we're gonna now we're gonna do our thing together. You know, you talk about training together, that can be just being on the same mat, or like did you guys really get a lot of repetitions together or, or I mean how actively together did you train? Yeah, he wasn't there long, but we got a lot of work together. And then he came with um he came with a crew of guys that had already kind of like been there. Um and we all we all got on really well. It was him, and then Rashid Yusupov, another guy who was in the the bracket below him, the weight class below him. And uh, honestly, until the you know the the pandemic and the war, they were mainstays at the gym. And then when when everything went down, we didn't see or hear from them for a while. And then here we are, whatever, three four years later. So can you reflect on that time together? Like, can you take anything out of it, or do you almost hope that he's thinking you're that guy you were three years ago? Because I imagine that's not the case. Eh. I don't – It, it's like one of those things, the, the farther down the rabbit hole you go, trying to go one way or the other, the more the, the math and the whatever, you know, he's going to do this, I'm going to do this, you know, whatever. We, we're both changed. We're both different. And I'm really confident that I'm going to show up that day with the better skills. Nice. Last thing for me, I guess, win here. What do you do? I mean, do you call for something? Do you ask for something? I mean, again, it's it, the rankings don't make sense here, but the, the matchup does. It's a big win if you win it. So do you call for somebody at the rankings? Do you call for title shots? What, what do you do? No, I, I fight Ali Asayev on February 4th and then have beer and pizza afterwards. We see what happens. What's going on, Steve? How are you doing today? What's up, man? Good, good, good. All right, so, you know, it took a little time off, but I see you were definitely representing your uh, hockey team right now. <laughs> so let me just ask you a quick question. Uh, who do you think is going to win it all this year in hockey? Oh, absolutely the Penguins. Okay, okay, okay. With that being said, seeing you doing some uh, recent interviews with, uh, what was his name? Um, MMA Roasted, uh, the comedian guy, right? Adam Hunter, yeah, good Adam buddy Hunter. of mine. All right, so if you could have... Three people to walk you out to a corner and be in your specific corner. Who would those three specific people be that's not related to MMA? Not fighting related? Um, man, I guess we'd have to go Adam Hunter. We'd have to go Arnold Schwarzenegger. And then we'd have to go, can they be in sports at all? It could be anything Vladimir else. Vladimir Klitschko. All right. Gotta get to the corner. <laughs> and then um, let me follow it up with this. Um, 
just had a tragic loss in the MMA world. Uh, what did Anthony Rumble Johnson mean to you? Um, shit. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Rumble was a guy that, you know, when I met him, he was at the height of his power. He was like, I mean, a fucking animal. He was, everybody he fought, he was knocking them out cold. And um, when I met him, you know, we weren't, we weren't close. We weren't even really friendly, but we were training partners, you know. I was somebody that I think he counted on to give him good work whenever he had a fight coming up. And um, I'm just talking about mental health earlier and, you know, like the, the things that we go through day to day. He was a guy that I think he had a lot going on in his head and in his heart. And um, whenever he had stepped away and come back, I had seen a, a positive change in him. And whenever he came back, I think that that camaraderie, that that fraternity, the friendship that I was yearning for had kind of filled itself in. You know, he was somebody that I could just tell liked liked himself so much more, liked the sport so much more. And um just to close, it was uh it was really special that I got to share some of my career with him. Yeah, that's a good thing right there. A lot of people don't get that moment. And, uh, you know, it's definitely living on through you, so I'm guaranteed, uh, you know, he's up there uh, smiling down on you. I hope so. Hey, Steve, right here. Um, so it looks like well, I've seen that you've had a great training camp, um, putting in a lot of work at Kill Cliff, um, putting a lot of work in with Linton Vassell. Um, what can you say about this camp, and how are you feeling going into fight night, you know? Yeah, I, I worked my fucking ass off, dude. <laughs> That's what I have to say about it. I was killing myself every day. And then um, I just, like I said, I, this is somebody I trained with before. And, you know, I, I knew everything that came with having a win over him. I knew everything that would come with that would bring. And I was just really looking forward to to capitalize on the, on the opportunity. So I made the most of it in training camp, and I think it's going to show on Saturday. What's going on, Steve? What's up? Um, the psychology behind fighting somebody that you've trained before, do you like that? Is this the first time that this has happened for you? I've uh, In the amateurs, I fought a couple guys I trained with, and not like not quite on the level that I trained with this guy, but guys that I'd sparred with semi-regularly, and then I ended up fighting them, you know. Um, I don't know, because it's like one of those things like, it's like one of those again. Like I feel like the the more the more people think about it and try to justify to themselves, you know, what happened in the gym, you know, the more they they end up going somewhere that that isn't isn't productive come time to compete. So like I said, for me, it was really just about working my ass off in camp and facing a guy that I don't really know any more about than any of my other opponents. Thanks, man. Hey, Steve. Uh, he mentioned Lynn v Vassell. I wanted to ask about him. It was, has he been a good influence on you? He's a veteran. He's He's been through this. Uh, <laughs> he's been through this, been through a lot of stuff. What can you tell me about Lynn and how it was like training with him? Lynn's one of my best friends, like my big brother. Um, you know, the the number one thing I look forward to, especially about getting ready for a fight and having a guy of, of Linton's caliber in my camp is not just obviously the the skill benefit I get, but also, you know, like the positivity and the support I get from having somebody like him. Um, Linton's been absolutely instrumental in my career. Of course, there's a certain confidence that comes with being undefeated, but do you carry a certain sense of pride being someone that finishes fights, 100% finish rate? Do you have a sense of pride being someone that gives the fans what they want to see finishes out there? I'll be honest with you. We, we just did Brennan Ward, and I heard him say he's the only guy with 10 plus mm -hmm. wins all finishes, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but it, it just occurred to me that he probably means 10 wins in Bellator I'll finish yeah. Um, No, I'll be honest with you. It's uh, it's inconsequential for me. I just I really just work as hard as I possibly can in the gym. And it's it's obviously nice and it's comforting and it's uh, uh, what's the word I'm uh, reassuring if you want if you want to say that to know that, OK, well, the things that I do, they work. Um, but you know, like once, once it's all said and done, I'm really looking forward to like make whatever it is better. You know, if I, if I knock somebody out in a minute, I want to have done it in 59 seconds. And the next time I want to have, if I submitted somebody with a Kimura, I want to, uh, submit them with, uh, you know, whatever, a, a flying on a plotter or something stupid like that. You know, I'm, I'm always looking to, 
to make my fighting as effective as humanly possible so that whenever the fight's over, whether it's decision, finish, whatever, it's, it's as decisive as humanly possible. And last question on a more serious note. There is a correct answer. Who had a more successful career, Sidney Crosby or Alexander Ovechkin? Um, who has more Stanley Cup visits to, the, to their town? I don't cover hockey. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> Thank you.